September 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 34 through 36 of the Old Testament. Come near you nations and listen, pay attention you people. The earth and everything it contains must listen, the world and everything that lives in it. For the Lord is angry at all the nations and furious with all their armies. He will annihilate them and slaughter them. Their slain will be left unburied, their corpses will stink. The hills will soak up their blood. All the stars in the sky will fade away, the sky will roll up like a scroll. All its stars will wither, like a leaf withers and falls from a vine, or a fig withers and falls from a tree. He says, indeed, my sword has slaughtered heavenly powers. Look, it now descends on Edom, on the people I will annihilate in judgment. The Lord's sword is dripping with blood, it is covered with fat. It drips with the blood of young rams and goats and is covered with the fat of ram's kidneys. For the Lord is holding a sacrifice in Basra, a bloody slaughter in the land of Edom. Wild oxen will be slaughtered along with them, as well as strong bulls. Their land is drenched with blood, their soil is covered with fat. For the Lord has planned a day of revenge, a time when he will repay Edom for her hostility towards Zion. Edom's streams will be turned into pitch and her soil into brimstone. Her land will become burning pitch. Night and day it will burn, its smoke will ascend continually. Generation after generation it will be a wasteland, and no one will ever pass through it again. Owls and wild animals will live there. All kinds of wild birds will settle in it. The Lord will stretch out over her the measuring line of ruin and the plumb line of destruction. Her nobles will have nothing left to call a kingdom, and all her officials will disappear. Her fortresses will be overgrown with thorns. Thickets and weeds will grow in her fortified cities. Jackals will settle there. Ostriches will live there. Wild animals and wild dogs will congregate there. Wild goats will bleat to one another. Yes, nocturnal animals will rest there and make for themselves a nest. Owls will make nests and lay eggs there. They will hatch them and protect them. Yes, hawks will gather there, each with its mate. Carefully read the scroll of the Lord. Not one of these creatures will be missing. None will lack a mate. For the Lord has issued the decree and his own spirit gathers them. He assigns them their allotment. He measures out their assigned place. They will live there permanently. They will settle in it through successive generations. Let the desert and dry region be happy. Let the wilderness rejoice and bloom like a lily. Let it richly bloom. Let it rejoice and shout with delight. It is given the grandeur of Lebanon, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the grandeur of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that have gone limp. Steady the knees that shake. Tell those who panic, be strong, do not fear. Look, your God comes to avenge with divine retribution. He comes to deliver you. Then blind eyes will open, deaf ears will hear, then the lame will leap like a deer. The mute tongue will shout for joy, for water will flow in the desert streams in the wilderness. The dry soil will become a pool of water, the parched ground springs of water where jackals once lived and sprawled out. Grass, reeds, and papyrus will grow. A thoroughfare will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not travel on it. It is reserved for those authorized to use it. Fools will not stray into it. No lions will be there. No ferocious wild animals will be on it. They will not be found there. Those delivered from bondage will travel on it. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return that way. They will enter Zion with a happy shout. Unending joy will crown them. Happiness and joy will overwhelm them. Grief and suffering will disappear. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah's reign, King Sennacherib of Assyria marched up against all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. The king of Assyria sent his chief advisor from Lachish to King Hezekiah in Jerusalem, along with a large army. The chief advisor stood at the conduit of the upper pool, which is located on the road to the field where they wash and dry cloth. Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace supervisor, 
accompanied by Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, son of Asaph, the secretary, went out to meet him. The chief advisor said to them, Tell Hezekiah, This is what the great king, the king of Assyria, says. What is your source of confidence? Your claim to have a strategy and military strength is just empty talk. In whom are you trusting that you would dare to rebel against me? Look, you must be trusting in Egypt, that splintered reed staff. If someone leans on it for support, it punctures his hand and wounds him. That is what Pharaoh, king of Egypt, does to all who trust in him. Perhaps you will tell me, we are trusting in the Lord our God. But Hezekiah is the one who eliminated his high places and altars and then told the people of Judah and Jerusalem, you must worship at this altar. Now make a deal with my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you 2,000 horses, provided you can find enough riders for them. Certainly you will not refuse one of my master's minor officials and trust in Egypt for chariots and horsemen. Furthermore, it was by the command of the Lord that I marched up against this land to destroy it. The Lord told me, march up against this land and destroy it. Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah said to the chief advisor, Speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. Don't speak with us in the Judahite dialect, in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But the chief advisor said, My master did not send me to speak these words only to your master and to you. His message is also for the men who sit on the wall, for they will eat their own excrement and drink their own urine along with you. The chief advisor then stood there and called out loudly in the Judahite dialect. Listen to the message of the great king, the king of Assyria. This is what the king says. Don't let Hezekiah mislead you, for he is not able to rescue you. Don't let Hezekiah talk you into trusting in the Lord by saying, The Lord will certainly rescue us. This city will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. Don't listen to Hezekiah, for this is what the king of Assyria says. Send me a token of your submission and surrender to me. Then each of you may eat from his own vine and fig tree and drink water from his own cistern until I come and take you to a land just like your own, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Hezekiah is misleading you when he says the Lord will rescue us. Has any of the gods of the nations rescued his land from the power of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Indeed, did any gods rescue Samaria from my power? Who among all the gods of these lands have rescued their lands from my power? So how can the Lord rescue Jerusalem from my power? They were silent and did not respond, for the king had ordered, Don't respond to him. Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace supervisor, accompanied by Shebna the scribe and Joah son of Asaph the secretary, went to Hezekiah with their clothes torn in grief and reported to him what the chief advisor had said. God, I wish that Zion would hurry up and come, that your son would hurry up and come. I fully realize on paper and in my heart what we are supposed to be doing between now and that time. But sometimes it gets hard. Even if you're in a passionate relationship with you and you're going hard, you get burnt out, you wear out. Things of this world try and take you down. And even though there's so many places in the Bible that talks about persevering and overcoming and putting on the armor and we have all this protection and strength from you and all this stuff, there's times where it truly feels like a desert. Not like the desert with the sand, but the desert from the cartoons when I was a little kid of this almost concrete that has these great huge gaps in it because it's so dry out there and the sun beating down, and there's like kind of skeletons all over the place. Sometimes, God, it just feels that way, and we feel like there's no chance for any joy, any hope, any good news to happen. 
And in all honesty, God, especially in those moments, I just want your son to come back already. I am so done with this world. I'm so done with the drama of the worldly things. I'm so done with the attraction of the worldly things. I'm so done with how I handle those situations. It says in here, those delivered from bondage will travel on this amazing path, this amazing road where we won't have any issues. There's not going to be any ferocious wild animals on it. Or when I read that, I think about all the problems that we have in this earth. That those of us who have been delivered to you, who have been ransomed, will get to be on this path where there's no tears, there's no unhappiness. There's joy in worshiping you and glorifying you. And God, in all honesty, there's days like today where I can't imagine there being joy in this world. I don't mean to sound dramatic. But sometimes just everything gets sucked out of you. People suck the life out of you. Situations <laughs> suck the life out of you. Situations you put yourself in suck the life out of you. And you just feel like you have nothing, nothing more to go on. That literally you can't crawl one more inch in this parched desert. So God, come to us today. You are our living water. You're not that mirage that we see in this desert. You are truly our living water. You are the only thing that is going to make us be able to deal with that dry soil that Isaiah talks about. That it will become a pool of water. That the par parched ground springs of water. God, I, I can't imagine where I'm at right now. That there could be water or there could be joy or there could be happiness because there's so many things that have happened in my life that aren't that but i know that you will find a way to break through all of that pain all of that hurt all of that fear and find a way to show me that there is joy and the only way to get there is through you and the only way to be on that road without all of those situations is through you. God, I would so love for your son to come back right now. But I know in the meantime, we are going to have persecution. We're going to have situations. We're going to need to deal with things that just continuously go wrong one after another. God, be our living water. Help us know that there is at least a potential for joy in the future. Help us keep our eyes on that eternal joy instead of the terrors of this earth. In your son's name I pray. Amen.